Any other residents? Again, just name and address, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Brent Abrahamson, 26 Franklin Terrace. I am a member of the Southbridge School Committee, speaking on my own behalf. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, first, as you may recall at the last meeting of the Town Council on April 13, I asked the Chairman to look into the assertion that some on the town side were trying to discourage and pressured the superintendent of schools from carrying out her duties as directed by the school committee. I will tonight point out to the chairman the email exchange between Councillor Vecchia and acting town manager. This exchange took place on April 15th, two days after I spoke here at the Citizens Forum. The substance of those emails certainly shows intent to apply pressure on the superintendent and as a recipient of those emails, Mr. Chairman, you can release them to show that what I'm saying is accurate. Second, Mr. Chairman, on Friday, April 17th, you and the acting town manager took your song and dance act on the road, so to speak, with your comments in an article in the Worcester Telegram and Gazette. Again, Truth is expected in such articles when our public officials are quoted, but clearly it's not a requirement with this uh, mutual admiration society. It would take more time than I have tonight to point out the fallacies in your song and dance routine, so I'll just make two general observations. First, Mr. Chairman, if uh, uh, I will just make, uh, it's clear, Mr. Chairman, that our schools would receive far more attention from you if somehow they could be listed as a charity. Maybe we could rename a school in your honor and build a statue. In the article, getting back to the article, the acting town manager said that in his 40 years, he's never experienced a school budget presented with no dialogue. That just may be because this town manager seems far more familiar with monologue than dialogue. Mr. Chairman, in the TNG article, the acting town manager had something ambiguous to say about the town charter. I would like to say something unambiguous about the charter. Regardless of the town council's intent or the stated intent of the acting town manager, the town charter states in section seven, acting town manager, any vacancy in the office of the town manager shall be filled as soon as possible by the town council. The term of service of any person as acting town manager may not exceed 12 months. Mr. Pecos began here on June 30th, 2014, and therefore cannot serve beyond June 30th, 2015, for free or otherwise, without uh, violating the town charter. Finally, Mr. Chairman, this town council, under your leadership, has spent a year publicly bashing, undermining, and scapegoating the schools and the school committee for all the ills of Southbridge. And there is some indication, at least as I see it, that you've had an effect on the climate in Southbridge. Those who are inattentive have confused the huffing and puffing on the town side against the schools as being the same as actual leadership. No institution could withstand the orchestrated barrage that this council has hurled toward the schools. You spent a year adding to the woes of the schools, and as the saying goes, if you break it, you own it. I sincerely hope you have an act two in mind, Mr. Chairman, because the town will look to your expertise to fix the schools that you have criticized to the point of demoralization. Good luck with that, and thank you for the time. Thank you. I will say I respectfully disagree. Uh, I know councilor, a couple of councilors have comments, or <coughs> so forth. Um, Enjoy you, Mr. Chair, I, just, I, I want to just address this as uh, respectfully as I can. Um, number one, at no point in time uh, has myself or this council, uh, thank you for leaving, Mr. Abrahamson, uh, uh, but at no point in time has this council intended to belay, uh, belittle the school department or um, Mr. Chair. Mr. Mr. Well, at the I moment, I was addressed. Point of Nonetheless, order. the council has the floor at the moment. 
when he finishes, because he addressed you, if you'd like to respond, you're so, you so may so. One of the things that, um, again, like I was saying, it's been said that this town council has been trying to cut the school budget. Um, and at no point in time has this town council cut the school budget. From day one that the budget <clears throat> process has started, from day one, there has been a 2% increase to that school budget. Unfortunately, unfortunately, seeing the, the decision that this council, some of the counselors did not agree, but the majority of this council pushed forward and we decided not to raise taxes, not to levy our taxes. And therefore, we sent a clear message, not only to our community, to our department heads, to the whole town of South, we sent a clear message saying that we are not gonna continue to raise and continue to give money to whether it be departments, whether it be to uh, uh, school department, wherever, until we are able to control our spending. And the only thing that happened, to my knowledge, the school department decided to push forward and go on top of the 2% increase that was already promised to them. And I believe there was other additional funds that were found that clearly almost totaled a million dollar increase to their budget proposed by the town. They went ahead and decided to present a three million plus on top of it. Again, what you guys do on your side with the budget is unfortunately we have no control over it. I wish we did. I wish we did. I wish we did have more control in regards to some of the spending because that's what we're trying to, we're not, department heads are not happy that we are cutting DPW staff, that we're cutting police department, fire. Um, you know, it's not the pleasant thing to do. But unfortunately, unfortunately, this is the reality that we have to make some tough decisions for the better of our community. Because if we continue to raise taxes just to try to fix a supposed system that's been broken for decades by feeding them more money, that's not the option. When, if, you know, we're going to talk on Wednesday night uh, during our, the school budget meeting because I do have many concerns. And I'm not going to bring those concerns here because this is not the time and place for it. I will address why you, again, you want to come up here and go after this council, and I'm glad you're speaking on your behalf and not on the school committee, on, although some may interpret it totally different. Well, you may, but I made it clear. I said I'm speaking and on again, my behalf. And again, at, at, yep. at well, and again, and I said thank you. Am I going to get a chance to answer this at, or not? You, you will have a chance, but at the moment he still has the floor. It's a so, soliloquy. And, and I said thank you. I said thank you for speaking on your behalf and not representing the whole school committee. Again, respectfully, I say thank you. The reason I said thank you for leaving, Mr. Abrams Hampson, is because you make these statements and you walk out, knowing that. Maybe one out of the nine, or maybe our town manager wants to address some of the things that you have said, but you're walking out the, the hall. So that's why I said thank you for leaving, because again, Sir, it was because... If I don't have some time to speak... Mr. Then, Abramson, you will, have, you will have time, however, at the time, at this particular moment, no, the I counselor has the chair. Mr. Abrahamson, I'm sorry. Yes, you can roll me out of order, and I... And, and I will. And I you're out of order, Mr. Abrahamson. You may continue, Councilor Carrasco, if you so desire. Again, if someone is going to come up here, and though we might not have to agree or disagree, we will respectfully answer you or address your concerns. This is the first time in two years that I've been on this council and seen this happen. Unfortunately, people are showing their true colors. Um, and I just, I just don't understand how this council can be attacked and not expected to just 
respectfully answer. At no point in time am I demeaning the school committee. At no point in time. If we didn't want to push this school department forward, the 2% wouldn't be there. The increase, they would have, been a, they would have had a level funded budget, which many communities do. Um, again, I want the best for my children. I want the best for all of our children. Are things not the way they should? Absolutely. Have we blamed them? Is it a blame game? Absolutely not. This, this has been decades, both on the town and on the s school side. Both the town council have passed, made some serious mistakes, and also past school committees have made serious mistakes. If we're going to continue to bash each other publicly, we ain't moving forward. We ain't moving forward. That's all I got to say. Just briefly, uh, what I would, I'm going to suggest. I want to apologize uh, for my outburst, and uh, I will wait patiently for my, my turn. Sure. Uh, so what I, I'm going to, to do is I'm going to let everybody have their say, and rather than encourage any sort of debate back and forth, uh, and I will give you a m minute or two to state your piece at the end. I know I have Council Clements and then the manager and perhaps others. <laughs> Go ahead, Council Clements. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. I, I have no response to Mr. Abramson. I don't think this is the, the right place to, to be in this uh, spirit of things. So I'm holding all comments on the school side of things. Good luck with that. Um. Thank you, Mr. Pecos. <coughs> Mr. Abramson and members of the council, um, all the comments that I offered to the newspaper, I offered in private to the superintendent approximately, I'm going to say roughly two weeks before that story appeared. Um, <coughs> the um, financial mismanagement in the school for several years now is well known. That's not my observation. Um, it's been brought to my attention by literally dozens of people. It was so bad that the town manager, and this is singular in my career, has to sign the bills and the purchase orders for the school department on a weekly basis because there is apparently not a sufficient level of trust that the school can do it on its own such that I must look over the school's shoulder. I do not enjoy that responsibility. Um, in point of fact, it takes a substantial amount of time uh, on my part, and I really do wish that there was a confidence level such that I could hand that back to the appropriate school authorities. But frankly, there is not that level of trust. When the school department brought forth a budget that was approximately $300,000 over the balanced budget that I had laid out uh, back in January, when that budget came forward about, I think, five weeks ago now to the EHS subcommittee, um, within 24 hours, uh, the financial team here in Town Hall was working to try to provide uh, $361,000 additional dollars for the school budget. Mind you now, we could have said there is no more money. We could have said the school budget did not meet the parameter. We could have said many things. But what we said in the spirit of compromise was let's try to find the $361,000 that the school department appears to need. Now that was on top of the fact, I remind you, that when it became necessary to reduce the overall uh, budget because of uh, the decision not to increase taxation next year, we asked the school department to absorb 300,000 of that cut and I willingly took 571,000 over double the cut on the shoulders of the town, the side of the budget. The school superintendent, the business agent, the CFO of the town and myself met and had a great constructive meeting, I think about three days after the school department brought that budget forward. Might have been a few more days. And within a very short time, we had come up with a couple of hundred thousand towards that deficit of 361. And the superintendent and the school's financial officer indicated that they would work toward trying to make reductions in the school budget uh, to close the remaining uh, $161,000 gap. We laid out for them uh, four or five areas where we thought they could very easily close that gap. And in point of fact, we thought that they could save far, far, far beyond that 161000 And my invitation to the superintendent and your financial officer was not to cut those dollars and then have it reduced from the school budget. 
My invitation to them was that I would support, and it's only a recommendation authority, this council is the appropriating authority, but I would support allowing the school to retain those dollars. And I said, frankly, I thought the potential savings was in the multi-hundreds of thousands and could well be in excess of a half a million dollars if the school administration and committee were to pursue these several ideas that we had laid out. I still believe that's the case. When, about a week later, I heard rumors, rumors, mind you, that the school had passed a budget that was 2.7 million higher than the budget that had been officially presented two weeks earlier. I had my secretary call the school department to inquire. And she was told that, yes, in fact, three days earlier, the school committee had passed a new budget. There had been no notification to town hall. There had been no budget sent to my office. There had been no official communication whatsoever by anyone. The inquiry elicited um, the fact that there was a new bu budget. And my secretary very respectfully asked, could we please have it? It was sent up a few hours later. When the budget arrived and I compared it to what had been presented some weeks earlier, I was confused. And so I called the superintendent and I said, which budget is your budget? Is it the one we've been working on for several weeks now or is it this new one? And she said the school committee had directed her to um, make this new $2.7 million um, additional budget, the official budget. So I asked if she would please come up to my office and meet with myself, uh, the CFO, and please bring Aaron with her. And at that meeting, I repeated to her all my concerns about all the areas where the school had yet failed to perform and to demonstrate to anybody's satisfaction, my own or anyone else's, that they were addressing those areas of mismanagement. And frankly, what I said to the superintendent is, why would the town, why would I recommend as town manager an increase in a departmental budget when the mismanagement that is already, frankly, overwhelmingly apparent has not been addressed and we have received no satisfaction that it has been addressed? And her answer to me was, that's a good question. And so I said, well, frankly, I can't recommend this budget. I can't even work toward trying to close this financial gap until we have some kind of satisfaction that the issues that are already there are repaired. Or to say it in short order, why provide $2.7 million more dollars to be mismanaged when the original $25.8 million is already mismanaged? That's my question. And to that, I have not received any answer, but I have begun getting a couple emails now from the school department, expressing an interest in exploring some of those areas that we put out there that needed exploration. And one of them is closing the school department building, moving the staff into this building or other quarters. And the question has been asked, would we partner? Of course we'll partner. It was our suggestion to begin with. Would we partner? Yes. Is there savings uh, on the order of magnitude of um, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands? Yes. I take it as a very hopeful sign that perhaps we will begin working together on that. It is unfortunate, and I hope it's not a response that is the product of the newspaper story, but I am, however, suspect since the arrival of the overture did come some days after the newspaper story, and in fact, the newspaper story and the public discussion was indeed a catalyst to begin the conversation. I want to assure you, sir, I am far more interested in dialogue than I am monologue. I have done nothing since I've come to town as your acting town manager, but engage everyone I can possibly engage in conversation and discussion to elicit forward change. I am just now beginning to see that from the school department, and I applaud it. I will say just briefly a uh, couple quick things. One, uh, in this last 10 months or so, uh, with this current sitting council, uh, one of the big initiatives that, that we've put forth, uh, that I've lobbied for since I've been up here, has been increasing dialogue with the school department. Uh, the, over the last several years, as uh, one former chair put out, pointed out rather, uh, we only meet with the school department when there's a problem, to which I always argued that is part of the problem. 
we need to be more proactive. This council has had three, I believe, Council of the Whole and School Committee joint meetings, uh, which is more than has probably been done since the Prop 2 and a half override 10 or so years ago. Uh, so there have been great efforts to increase dialogue, uh, increase a cooperative spirit. Uh, in recent months, uh, I, would, I would argue that it's, it's not the council that's necessarily undermining that, but uh, nonetheless it has been. Uh, in terms of the budget increase itself, while 300,000 may be a modest increase, uh, 3 million in my personal opinion, is, is a ludicrous increase. That is the entirety of our police department budget is $3 million that we would, or that the school department would have us increase. Uh, as someone, much as yourself, uh, being a former educator, knowing where money can go in a school uh, and where it actually goes oftentimes, different stories. And for me, and, and I don't have the article in front of me, um, I don't recall what quotes they used or didn't use, um, but I will say this much that I, I, one quote I do remember that they used is, is something to the effect that, in my personal opinion anyways, the problems facing the school district are not primarily fiscal in nature, but more so the carousel that is administration and turnover and so forth. We have had, we are in our third year of the new middle high school and including actings and interims, we've had five principals. Uh, since Joe Biley left 10 or so years ago, I can't even tell you how many principals we've had. Uh, the number of superintendents, and that's just at the high school, never mind the elementary schools which have had a number of turn, uh, administrative turnovers as well. And for me, and, and this is my last piece, is just, uh, for me, this the analogy I look at it as is if, if you have a 24-year-old son who uh, you know, can't hold down a steady job, is constantly in and out of relationships, has totaled two of his last three vehicles, and has $25,000 in credit card debt, and he says, Dad, I need 50 grand, do you give it to him? Or do you hold that child more accountable and ask him to take for himself and work for himself, correct those issues, because at some point you have to do for yourself. Uh, and for me, this is, and I think this is what I said in the newspaper, uh, in this situation, I think this is throwing good money after bad. And with that, I will just go ahead, Councilor Carrasco. Again, um, and this is directly to Mr. Abrahamson. I apologize uh, for being out of order. Uh, but again, um, it, it, it irks. We're here working hard, just like you are on the other side. But to come up here and try to point the finger, at no point in time in your statement were admissions made about school committee members or school committees in the past making errors. It, it, tonight, it was just about us, our song and dance. Well, if it's our song and dance, you wrote the song. Are there any other counselors with questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll give you a couple, two minutes. I think that's Mr. fair Chairman. at this point. Mr. Chairman, uh, you know, in, in the, in the uh, spirit of, of uh, uh, dialogue, I've heard a lot of monologue tonight, and I've heard a lot of the same stuff repeated that was repeated in the newspaper. Let me ask you one question. Who sets the budget for the schools? According to the town charter, the council is the appropriating authority. It right, is, and it that's is, uh, correct. It is the legislative authority, correct. and it is senior to the school committee. Yes, absolutely. So your objection is simply that the superintendent indicated what was needed for us children. Not that she, she can't demand it. She can't demand one penny from this council. You are the ones that vote the budget. You just don't want her to say it. That is so disingenuous. You know, you can say, oh, well, those schools don't deserve that. They don't deserve You can say all that. You say that with your vote. You already said it when you, when you restricted the town manager to how much he can raise in taxes. Uh, you know, so to blame the schools, you set the amount. 
You can set it at nothing. But that's not going to stop the schools from needing things. And if you don't like that, I'm sorry. Our superintendent's supposed to say what's needed. And we've asked her to do that, just as you and your, uh, our town manager to, to create a budget within parameters. Uh, I, I don't know what more I can say, except that uh, uh, we have it clear. That's the one clear thing I think everyone should be able to understand. The town council sets the budget for the schools. The schools can demand all they want, Mr. Abrams, but they your, cannot your get up, one sir. penny. Thank you. Councilman Manna. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is to you and the rest of the town council. If I recall, at the um, budget meeting for the EHS on the first school committee, they came to us with that 2%, the $300,000. A week later, they're on TV, and they're asking for $3 million. And that's all I have to say about that, and I am not going to do dialogue back and forth like this. Well, Thank Mr. you. Chair, if I could just correct that. There's, there was nothing directed to you individually. But that was wrong. And your time has expired at this point. That was wrong. So you Counselors, don't care that that was wrong. There are misstatements that are made up on this dais Mondays and Tuesdays on a regular basis, sir. <laughs> Councilor Steves. Oh, thank you. I just wanted to be brief about this. As, as I see it, um, the whole process until we actually make a final vote is a process of negotiation. Um, if the school committee proposes a uh, $3, uh, $3 million extra budget, it is our responsibility to sit down and talk to them and figure out, okay, where can we meet? In the middle, somewhere in the middle. It's probably, given the the, the financial situation will probably be significantly less than half of what you guys want. Unfortunately, that's the way things are. I was not one of the people who supported the idea of austerity at the beginning, um, and I made that clear. I am not a, I'm not a huge, I'm not a fan of, of blanket cutting. Um, I do think that we, that there are some things that s uh, the schools and other departments need that may go beyond what the, um, the absolute bottom line, no, no new taxes thing Your point of order, Mr. is, Chair? but we still well, have to figure that out. We have on an agenda item here. We are well and out of order. <laughs> the citizens member had his five and seven minutes, and we are now on the on t debating amongst council as to what the the school department needs. Mr. That Chairman, is an I'll agenda item, and I ask that we move on with the council's agenda that is set before us. And if we need further meeting on this, then we set that. But we are bordering on. Uh, an illegal action here by talking about a substance that is not on our agenda for this evening. Chairman. And there should be no back and forth dialogue at Citizens Forum. I vote to move the question. Thank you. There's, There's no, no question, question to move. Oh. Chairman, question. Just However, your point of order is sustained. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to address you. You are correct. And uh, yes. if I have any more to say, I have tomorrow night to say it. Sure thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.